Joining me now here on the MMA Report is a man that's going to be heading overseas next week to fight for Fight Night's Global 65, Jamie Pickett. Jamie, I appreciate the time. Uh, first off, how's things been since uh, that win back in November of last year? It's been hectic. No fights. Nobody wanted to take a fight with me. It's been, it's been really bad. Why has no one wanted to take a fight with you? I have no clue. Don't know, but it's it's always hard for me to get fights. Always hard for me to get fights. It's the same same thing every time, man. Excuses. Is it would would frustrating be the right way to describe the the way you feel? Yes, sir. I'm I'm str- I've been extremely frustrated. You know, training all the time. As much as I train, you know, three four times a day, and being promised a fight, then not having a fight signing the contract and my guy gets hurt or backs out, you know? No, I had heard before this fight came together that you were actually supposed to fight there at the Bellator monster energy cup, uh, event there in Charlotte, correct? Yep. Another situation where the opponent pulled out the last minute. No, the opponent didn't pull out. I don't know what happened with that fight. I, all of a sudden I was off the card. I was like, all right. But uh, you, you get this fight now in, in Russia. You're taking on a UFC vet in Goshlaz Umatov, who's 16-5-1. He went 1-3 in the UFC, but he is coming off a, a first-round TKO victory. Uh, you know, first off, what was your thoughts when your management told you that this was the fight offer? Only thing I had a problem with was it was in Russia, you know. Uh, it was so far, you know, but <clears throat> fight's a fight. He's not going to win. I mean, I had to cut. A lot of weight in a short amount of time, but I'm smart. I'm a smart fighter. I know how to. I know how to. I know how to fight whenever I don't have the energy I usually have. With having the weight that you have to cut for this fight and traveling overseas, how 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 will you handle your weight cut? Will you basically start it here in the United States and then finish it over in Russia? Right. I've, I've already started it. I was two seventeen. Now I'm two o three. It sucks. I'm hungry. Not in a good mood. <laughs> uh, a girl doesn't like it too much, but <laughs> I'll finish my weight cut in Russia. I'll get to Russia. And hopefully, I get to Russia. I'd be like under 200. I want to be like 198, 200. So I'll cut the. If I stay at that weight, I cut the water weight easily. Have you talked to to anyone who's fought over there to kind of you know get kind of you know so you know what to expect when you get over there in terms of because I know I've talked to some guys who have fought over there who say you know look it's a uh, you know the fan base it's it's a lot different very respective fan base even if you're a foreign fighter but have you talked to anyone that maybe you train with that's fought over there and how they handled the situation? Yeah, I talked to Dewan Owens and he's he's been over there fighting. He said that they're real cool. He said the only thing about it is. If you go to decision, you're more than likely going to lose. So, <laughs> my plan is to finish. Well, my plan is always to finish. I, I don't ever look for a decision. I always try to finish. So, I'm just going to go in there and try to finish in the best way I can. Prior to the Bellator fight in this fight, was your initial plan to try out for the Ultimate Fighter when they were going to do middleweights? Yes, sir. I was going to go, but they cut that too. I mean, I had like a streak of bad luck in like a week. Like, I had everything going for me. Oh, I got UFC trials. I have a build to a fight. I get a call. You're off the build to a card. Then I get a text. The UFC trials is not happening for 185. I'm like, I've already bought a $600 plane ticket to Vegas. Crazy. You're you're one of multiple fighters that has uh, told me over the past couple of days that. You know, they had already bought their tickets and, uh, you know, and, I, and honestly, anyone who buys a plane ticket knows that the cheaper plane ticket is a non-refundable plane ticket. I'm guessing that uh, you didn't have a refundable one. Correct. Man, that, that's just. I was going to cheap route. I don't have a lot of money, so I was going to cheap, cheap route and I bought a non-refundable one. So I had a call. I got it credited to my account so I can fly pretty much wherever I want. Or five hundred because I had to pay a ninety-five dollar. No, no, for six hundred dollars, had to pay a ninety-five dollar cancellation fee. Well, one hundred and ten dollars. Well, at least you're not out all the six hundred dollars. I guess that's that's the best way to look at it. 
Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to use that that money to to, to uh, that flight credit to fly somewhere nice after this fight. In terms of the actual fight here, uh, Gasson trains out of American Top Team. You know, as I mentioned, he's been in the UFC. Do you, do you have a general idea of what you think his game plan for you is going to be? He's going to try to rush me. He's 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 a vet, so he's going to try to rush me. He knows, oh, this guy's only been training for two weeks. So he's going to try to rush me and try to gas me out early. That ain't going to work. Um, you can try that, but it's not going to work. I'm just going <clears> to <throat> – he's, he's going to be trying to finish me quickly. And, he, and if he doesn't do that, he's going to think he's going to wear me down and finish me later on or win by a decision. None of that stuff is going to work. He's going to get taken down, round, probably second round. I'm going to stand up with him to hold first. I'm a better I'm a better all-around fighter, period. And then I'll take him down in the second round, and I'll either submit him or pound him out. Do you at all think that he might be underestimating you? Yeah, he's underestimating me big time. Underestimating big time, I'm sure. I'm seven and two. He's what, fifteen and five, six, sixteen and five? Yeah. So yeah, and I've never fought in the UFC and I haven't really fought anybody worth talking about. So in, in a lot of people's eyes. So he's gonna think this is an easy win, easy fight. But he has no idea what he's what he's walking into. I'm telling you, he has no idea. Do you feel like people underestimate your skills overall just based upon there hasn't been that, that big notable win yet? No. I, everybody, as far as America, everybody knows that I'm I'm definitely somebody you don't want to fight. I'm, I'm a top dog. People people stay out of my way, man. People don't really fight me. And I don't turn down no fights. I take all of them. People just don't, stuff just don't happen, man. It's not happen for me, but I'm a tough guy. They all know it, <clears throat> but I just got to get the right eyes to see it. When you, when you have you know all these fights that ultimately do not happen, how, how do you make sure that doesn't get you down? Oh, it gets me down plenty, man. I've had, I've had a lot of times I was like, man, I don't even want to fight no more. Because <laughs> it's just like, I could be doing so much stuff. I got a degree. I can do all, I can do a lot more stuff, but it's just, I love to fight, and I'm like, dang, am I... You know, everybody's like, man, you're right there. You're right there. You just got to get one more win. You know, you're good. Just just get a good win, and you should be in there. So hoping they're right because, I mean, this guy's a good guy. He's UFC vet. So after I take him out, I'm going to I'm gonna be sending a lot of messages to Dana, to <laughs> Dana White. I'm going to be talking to him like we're best friends until he answers me. With the he win- likes fire. With the victory here, if your next fight's not in the UFC, would how would you feel? I feel bad, but that's the name of the game, man. You got to get somebody to see it. I mean, I hope. I mean, hope it's in the UFC, but if it's not, I mean, it depends on what promotion asks. Depends on who it is. It's going to be, I'm going to be pretty picky after this fight. If I win this fight, I'll be like, man, I don't know. If it's not... It's it's a money thing after that. It's like I have more fights than everybody else. I mean, I get in somewhere. Now you mentioned about this long, you know, flight you have over to Russia. So are are you loading up uh, the computer or, or tablet with uh, movies, music? Have you even thought about that? I am loading up the tablet big time. Movies, 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 movies. I don't like. I ain't trying to be over there. Like, it's a long flight, man. That's a long <laughs> flight. I was like, dude, I got to get some movies, man. I, get some, I don't care how much it costs. I'm buying movies. So. The longest flight I've ever done is seven hours. What's the, what's the longest flight you've been on prior to this? Five and a half. Now, you mentioned about movies. Is it comedies, action movies? What, what type of uh, movies are you going to load up on? I love horror, comedy, action. I don't like. I don't really care for suspenseful unless it's like action suspenseful. I don't really care about drama. I don't really like drama at all. Any kind of drama, really. I kind of just like action movies, horror, comedy, that kind of stuff. What are some of the recent movies you've you've watched? I just saw the new Guardian of the Galaxy. <laughs> that was good. It was alright. It wasn't better. It wasn't. It wasn't as good as the first one, but it's mm-hmm. like a filler. I'm a big like comic book 
head. I'm like comic books, Dragon Ball Z, cartoons. I'm like a big kid. So <laughs> it is, you know, you know, watching movies, you know, reading comic books. Is that really the thing that ultimately kind of gets your mind off the fight game? Yeah. I, yes, sir. I, I definitely do that. Clash of Clans, you know, stuff like that. I, I do a lot of stuff like that, man. I do like, I teach a lot, I teach children, I teach grown ups, jiu jitsu and stuff. And I don't really think about the person I'm fighting that much until like the fight day. Mm-hmm. Even at weigh ins, I'm kind of like, oh, you're here. Well, I don't really think about him that much. I'm thinking about what I'm going to eat. You know, I'm not really thinking about him. Well, I'm about to drink. I'm about to drink all this, all this Pedialyte, you know, this coconut water. I, I ain't thinking about him. And then the day of the fight, I don't really think about him as much until, like, people start walking out to fight. Then I start thinking about that person. In, in terms of, uh, you know, teaching, you know, children and adults, how has that made you a better fighter? Is, is it is it allowed you to kind of maybe uh, pay a particular attention to certain things that maybe you wouldn't have if you weren't teaching other people? Yeah, I mean, I'll do things. I'll teach somebody something, and I'll just be like, oh, that's not right do it this way and I'll and I'll be teaching somebody something and I was just thinking of I'll think of different ways to do stuff just by teaching it and I like teaching people you know how to defend themselves it's fun but of course your fight coming up here uh, next week fight nights global 65 Jamie as always I appreciate time and let everyone know where they can follow you out on social media follow me at Jamie Pickett MMA on Instagram Jamie Pickett MMA on Instagram and Jamie Pickett Facebook and JRP69 Snapchat. And the 69 is for North South Jiu Jitsu. It's not anything nasty, guys. <laughs> why, why do I have a feeling that someone has mentioned that to you before? <laughs> yes. They're like, why you got JRP69, you pervert? I'm like, no, nah, man, I said 69, like, kind of in a pervert, perverted way, but it's about jiu-jitsu, like, north-south. They're like, oh, okay, okay. I'm like, oh, God. I, I should never done it. Is the north-south choke uh, one of the favorite submissions that you go for? No, 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 no. It's not. My favorite submission is probably a Kimura because there's so much stuff you can get off of Kimura. So I usually set things up with a Kimura, but Kimura is my favorite. How much of going for a Kimura, and, and this will be the last question I'll ask you, but is about wearing down your opponent's arms for maybe set something up later on in the fight? You could do that, but I don't really do that. I just I like to get I like to get a get a hold of Kimura and make you think I'm gonna go for a Kimura, and I go for something else. But if you're dumb enough to you know roll the wrong way or let me have your arm, then I'll go ahead and get the Kimura. But usually my Kimura set up. It's just a trick. It's usually for me to get a hold of something else. I go from like a chain. And, of course, everyone's going to be able to watch your fight come up next week. Jamie, I appreciate time, and good luck uh, heading over to Russia, man. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, man.